Good afternoon. It's 1.39 Eastern Standard Time. I'm Michael Pinsky. I'm going to continue on with this because this chapter is pretty cool. I really enjoyed this tutorial. Um, okay, so we're going to be talking about using reference planes, and these are so powerful. Um, objects in the Revit model are able to maintain relationships with other objects. However, you may not always have other model elements like walls, floors, and roofs to relate to other geometry. This is why data objects are so important. If you have been using Revit for a reasonable amount of time, it seems obvious that levels and grids would control content, but reference planes aren't often appreciated. Here's a simple exercise, it's not that simple, to demonstrate this kind, a special kind of relationship between reference planes and walls. So it, the, the, the text instructs you to download and open the file co2-walls-start.rvt uh, from this book's web page, uh, activate the level one floor plan, select the wall segment, right click and then choose create similar from the context menu. Use the tangent end arc option from the draw panel in the contextual tab of the ribbon to create a series of concentric walls starting from the left end of the, the left end point of the provided wall as I'm about to demonstrate. Then I'm going to go to the south elevation view from the architectural tab in the ribbon, I'm going to click the reference plane tool and add two angled pl reference planes, as I'm about to show you. And if I move one level, you'll notice that the walls will move with it. I don't have to select the walls. It's in the properties of the walls to maintain a relationship um, to the level one data. You could make the top of the walls maintain this same kind of relationship to level two as well, or any level. So uh, I'm going to do that right now. now the wall was provided. I deleted it so I could show you how to draw a quick wall. So I'm in the architectural tab. I'm on level one. And I'm going to do exactly what it just told me to do. I'm going to go to the wall command or, or the build panel, the wall tool, pull down. You see there are various types. We can get into those later. But the architectural wall I'm going to draw creates a non-structural wall in the building model. Use the type selected to specify the type of wall to create or use the default type to create a generic wall and specify a different wall type later. Now that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to invoke the command, and you'll notice that within the context of invoking the command, the modify options ribbon opened up with the options bar, and within the context of invoking it, I have some options. Now what it wants me to do is draw a tangent and arc from the existing wall, and I can't because I don't have any existing walls to start with. I only have this um, path, uh, path of travel line. So as you can see here, there's lots of ways you, you can draw this wall. You can draw it as a straight line, as a rectangle, as a, an inscribed polygon, a circumscribed polygon, a circle, a start end radius arc, a center ends arc, a tangent end arc, a fillet arc, an ellipse, a partial ellipse, pick lines, pick faces, and that's it. So these are a lot of different uh, ways in which you can draw your geometry. Uh, starting with the basic geometric um, primitives, um, polygons, parallelograms, trapezoids, all those good things, triangles, acute, obtuse, all the shapes you can possibly think of, envision in your mind, you can create. So I'm going to start by going to this uh, tool here, start and radius arc, creates a curve by specifying the start point, end point, and arc radius. If you want to specify the radius first, use the center ends arc tool. So I'm just going to invoke that command, and I'm going to come over to here, and I'm going to draw this right around here. I'm going to pick this, start and end, and I'm just going to give it a 10 foot radius. And well, therein lies it, it start, it's start. But now we have to invoke the tangent end arc option to do the rest in order to get this wall the right way. Because this, my friend, is where the money is. So if I, again, go to architecture, invoke the wall command, and use the tangent end arc command, creates a curve that connects to the end of an existing line. The start point of the arc snaps to the end of an existing line. Click to start the arc at the snap point, then click again to indicate its end point the radius of the arc adjusts automatically. So if I grab it here, I grab it 
here, I believe. Nope, that's not it. Hold on. I grab it here. And, oh wait, I'm sorry, I have to start from the other side. If I go from here to here, I can start to show you what it's like, because it ain't easy. It's hell, man. It's a helix. We're all in this together. It's tighter than a zildjian. It's tighter than a snare drum. So there's our wall. If you look at it in 3D real quick, you'll see it's a helix. So now what it wants us to do is it wants us to be able to constrain and manipulate this form, uh, this elemental form, uh, through uh, reference points. So we're going to do that. Uh, let me create a little maze, if you will. So here is our, our, our wall. I'm going to go back to the um, level one and keep it in plan view. And we're going to notice that you know we can dimension this keep these uh these um, these widths um correctly concentric equidistant if you will um, but i just rough drafted it I, i'd like to draw your attention to the uh, south elevation so now here's the south elevation let me just delete this for a second let me delete this now what, what it wants us to do is to go to the south elevation and draw some reference planes and constrain the model to it so now if I go to the architecture tab and then a reference plane, let's just say I go over here. I go to the end of this right there. And I take this reference plane and I say I want to draw it at a, a seven degree angle. And then escape, escape, and then we'll do it again. We'll go to this end here and we'll draw this at a seven degree angle. Now, now that I have this wall in perspective, in the perspective I need, I want to go ahead and I'm going to constrain the wall to the reference planes. Now, I can easily constrain the wall to the, to the, to the levels because they already are. When you created a wall, the first thing it asks you, if you look in the properties palette, if it will do it for me, well, hold on, let me add this command. Come on, do me right. Oh, I'm in, I'm in elevation, I can't do it for me, but I'll do it from the, I'll come back to this, go to level one. You see, if I if I actually invoke the wall command, you'll notice that base constraint is level one, base constraint. So just know that because back in the south elevation, you know that if I move the level, the wall is going to move with it. It has a it's constrained parametrically to it. So I'm going to undo that. And notice that if I move level two, move level two, you'll notice that it doesn't. And I'll undo that. So now, what does that, how does that do anything? Big deal. It, it gets better. I mean, that's in and of itself is a relatively good, uh, useful um, concept, a tool, the implementation of the tool, because things are hosted. This wall's hosting things. For example, it's hosting floor boxes. It's um, drains. It's hosting um, uh, carpet. All sorts of things that it's hosting. Skim coat. It's... it's it, uh, Topping slabs. It's, it's hosting topping slabs. So you got to think about it in those terms. Now, okay, so now what it says to do is that we're going we're gonna to actually constrain this and we're going to create uh, a relationship between not only the, the, the levels uh, but the reference plane. So for starters, if I was to select the wall and hit hover over it without selecting it and hit tab, it'll allow me to select the whole chain of it. And then I click, and sure enough, that entire wall is selected, and here it's its properties. Its base constraint is level 1. But notice, and it's non-bearing as far as structural is concerned, but I deviate from center. I digress. When I selected that wall, and it is selected, you notice that within the um, context of invoking the command, the modify tab opened up a contextual ribbon and an options bar. Contextual ribbon and an options bar. And if you, if you notice here, this tool tap, attached top slash base attaches selected walls to model elements such as roofs and floors on the options bar select top or base to indicate which part of the wall to attach then select the roof floor ceiling or parallel walls to attach the wall to now we're going to do that but instead of touching the reference planes we're going to use we're going to actually notice that it says attach wall top 
So now it's asking us to select the roofs, floors, ceilings, or parallel walls to which selected walls should be attached. Now, if I could select the reference plane, I could also notice that I can also take the level and the wall itself, hit tab, hit the wall, and look at this. Top constraint unconnected. Up to level two, apply. And nothing looks like it happened. But now that it's constrained both in the constraints of level one and constrained to level two, and there's a parametric relationship between those uh, items, you'll notice that as I move level two up incrementally, you'll notice that the top of the wall, top plate, if you will, is uh, still attached to the level. And so is the bottom base point still attached to the um, sill plate, if you will, attached to the sill plate. So I'm going to undo all that. Undo all that. Get this back to where it was. I have to do it. In, I can do it. Uh, I can undo a little further down the road. Nudge up, nudge down. I can un undo 27 commands if I want. You can do it like that. You can undo back to as many commands as you want. So um, anyway, so let me so let me do that. It still wants to go in commands, but let me get this right. So let's go down to. Um, let's get rid of all these. <laughs> get rid of all these because I, I was nudging the crap out of it so i believe there it is let's see if i can go back any further i so said there it is back at oh still not back back down a little more hold on nudge up right there okay there it is so i nudged it back i got it back to where it needs to be all right so let's constrain this now to those reference planes you're going to see this is really cool so now let's say i select the wall again hover over it hit tab select the whole entire chain block of walls now it's one component if you will and now again within the context of invoking just selecting it within the context of selecting it for modification, the modification menu opened up a ribbon, and that ribbon opened up the options bar, which allows us to attach top slash base. So now, notice that within the options bar, after I selected that, attach wall top, attach wall base is a, a, a radio button. So I'm going to leave it selected to attach wall, and remember to attach it to the first reference plane, the top reference plane. And then I'm going to invoke the command again. And I'm going to attach it now to the base. And I'm going to select the other reference plane. And as you can see from the 3D model, we now have it constrained and on an angle. So now, if we take a look at this a little more, you'll see the power of the platform. Um, what makes this a little more fun down the road, if it's indeed your intent to proceed along with this instruction? is that you can do some things with this that you probably didn't really realize were that difficult. They're not that difficult. And here's an example of it. Because that's a really nice looking wall. But again, to me, it's not aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And sometimes, I'm one of those guys, I like to see pretty things. Things that go beyond my imagination. In any event, understanding how to navigate in a three-dimensional modeling environment is important. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a far, it's a powerful tool. A lot of things you can do with it. Next video, we're going to talk about using content and getting on um, with working with type and instance parameters. There's so much more to this that you'll like. Um, just because this pat platform is so intuitive, uh, it doesn't take much. It really doesn't take much to figure it out. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't. We'll get to that. Toodaloo.